absolutely insanely epic. Wow. Now, I know you saw this in the time lapse just then, but let's have a quick fly around. Because, yeah, I want to cover all of the angles from this. So, wow. 61, by the way. 61 blocks tall was what this thing ended up being. <laughs> this looks so sick. All right, dude. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 6. As you can see there in the time lapse, we got together, me, Green, and Stress, and built this, uh, well, G, un, G unit tower, G tower, Grower, gr yeah, I don't know what we call it, but we built this, and it's a great start, it's absolutely not finished, I need to say that it's absolutely not finished, but it is a good start, and it is a footprint of the G team's base. Just before Christmas, or actually on Christmas Eve, Grian put up a bunker for us inside this thing. He also drew a sketch uh, uh, in MS Paint, which I declared looked like a toilet. <laughs> it really did look like a toilet. And uh, from that sketch, and also from uh, some other things that we saw and got inspired by, we raised this building. Um, and luckily, because Grian raised this bunker, or put this bunker up, which looks absolutely cool, by the way, uh, before Christmas, he also declared all the stuff that we needed. So in the Christmas holiday, I actually spent quite a bit of time in getting a lot of resources for us um, for the for the base build. And I know that uh, some other people did the same, which was great. So we kind of came together and, and, and yesterday when we built this thing, we had all the resources available, which made a huge difference. But as I said, the base is not completely finished yet. It still needs a lot of interior, which at this moment in time, I'm actually not sure how we're going to do because we don't want to block out the windows. Uh, but we need some kind of, yeah, some kind of interior thing. Uh, there are a lot of functions to it that we need to do. And personally, I feel like I want to add like detail on the outside. Um, want to add, want to change this up. I know that Stress wants to terraform this uh, mountain a little bit, add some rocks and stuff so that it looks cool around it. But it is a great start and it is freaking tall, man. <laughs> it is so tall. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. But today, dudes, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading back to the lab because I've also actually, during the holidays here, I've also done some work on the village breeder that we started last episode. So down over here, where we did the village breeder last time, like I said, I've done actually quite a bit of work. I probably put uh, six hours into this or something like that and check this thing out now. And let me go through with you what has been done. So when I left off, last time we had these two villagers in the center here as our kind of parents for the for the village breeder we had those two and we had the guy upstairs which is still chilling there uh, activating this fake village all right so that's what we had and then since then i added two more cells with two more parents or a pair of parents in each <laughs> That are now able to breed and then what I did as well was that I added a system to feed them as you guys know to make the villagers Willing you need to get them to get hearts and you can do that by trading with them Or you can do that by having them work for example in a farm or you can feed them So basically what I've did here is we have a storage system where we if we put food in it And we don't stand that close. It's gonna send out the food and it's gonna loop it around the villagers and because the villager will this guy here will pick up any food in a 3 by 3 area um, or any villager will do that in a 3 by 3 area through the head that we did we did the experiment last time uh, inspired or helped from Nembon MC um, they are going to pick up the food as it travels by if they're hungry. Now, there was a few important things. Nembum NC actually uh, PM'd me after last video. Thank you so much, Nembum, saying that because of 113, the design that we were using wasn't going to work. Um, something about the villagers being, uh, or, or the pickup mechanics changing with water. And so I did some tests in creative, and the only thing that I could find was that if you were to put the water above the villagers' heads, the water would pull the villager up of their little cell and ruin the whole thing. Um, 
But I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Nembon suggested me to do. He said something about a fence post. Uh, all I did was instead to just run the water in the space around the villagers, as you can see. And this works great. This works great. But there are still a lot of things that we need to do with this thing. Um, and the main thing that I want to get done today is a god machine. I got, and then I look like this. Oh my goodness, I still, I'm still Bumble Skull. I'm sorry, dudes. <laughs> yeah, I want to do a god machine, even though, you know, yes, you can't take me serious when I look like this. But a god machine is something I made in Hermitcraft Season 4. Uh, and it's what I call a machine that basically lets me select when the babies uh, come down here, I then press a button and I get a villager like this, and then I select, okay... Do I put this in a trading center or do I kill this guy? Right? And I'm, I'm not meaning just like slashing them with a sword. And I've started this process here, but there's a lot of the uh, a lot to do here. This here is a minecart traveling into the corner of two blocks. One of them being a glass block. And this should be able to pick up villagers. So we should actually try this out just real quick. I'm pretty sure this should work. But there you go. That picked up a villager and now... Uh, we can trade with him had he been had he been an uh, adult um, And as you can see I also did the channels here so that all villagers that are being bred above is going to be challenged channeled channeled into this space here in order to make this fully automatic breeding and efficient We're gonna need to provide them with food So the idea another module of this project is of course to make an automatic carrot farm inside here somewhere Hide it away kind of like we did in the underwater base but I am rambling here and I really want to get to doing this thing. So the goal for today is to get this god machine up and working. And I'm thinking, originally I was thinking to have the trading in this space here. But it's going to be, there, there's not going to be enough space for that. So I'm thinking we'll probably put the trading over here, the trading hall. Okay, so essentially what we want to make with this god machine is a button system. We want to have a green button and we want to have a red button. Right, and when I press the red button, I want the villager to go away and go into uh, Emerald Heaven. And <laughs> when I press the green button, I want them to go into the to be trading center and go into the first empty cell. Now, I realize as I do this that that requires us to have empty cells in the um, villager trading system, and if we don't, we also sort of need the system to know that. And put them somewhere else. Yeah, maybe I need to maybe I need to focus on that once I get to it. Um, as in, like I can build that module after I've done the uh, trading system. I think the most essential thing is make sure I have a red button to dispose the uh, villager. Make sure I have a green one to store them in the trading system. Anyway, the uh, the <laughs> the plan is clear. Uh, all I need to do is pretty much put this together. And what I always do to start a project like this is make your interface, make the user interface, uh, decide where the buttons are going to be, decide that what you're actually going to see, because that makes the whole thing so much easier at the end of the day. And for me, I kind of want the villager to be here. And by the way, to determine if we are pressing green or red, we of course need to right click the villager, we need to trade with them. So. Wherever we are standing, we're gonna need a little bit of a storage to get some to get some emeralds and some other things that we can trade with the villagers to unlock all their trades. Speaking about unlocking all their trades, check this out, guys. This librarian, who's a parent, has the perfect paper trade, right? But it doesn't stop there. Look at this. He has a silk touch book for seven emeralds and a channeling book, which I don't know if that's good, but he has a channeling book for five uh, emeralds. Silk touch for seven. I think the best you can get is five That's really impressive. Unfortunately though, he's a parent So if I want to trade with him, I have to like break through and get up here So I got the first little piece of this I think done um, And the way this works is we have an input here or wherever this hopper chain is connected to Where we put a minecart in and obviously we would fill this system with minecarts um, That goes into this dispenser this dispenser uh, and the powered rail are both powered by this block here, which I have a redstone channel or line going across this thing here, down here, and powering that. So when I when I send that off, that will send a minecart off. I had to do a little thing here to make this work. I had to add this side 
feeder onto the track and this was just the easiest way I could think of doing it and uh, yeah, let's just press the button and I'll, I'll show you what happens. The minecart gets dispensed, it gets shot over here, and then when it comes back, it goes over this detector rail, which will switch this rail so that the minecart always goes to our selector rather than going back and just chilling over here. So without this block here, this should actually pick up a villager and bring him, well at this point, back to here. And you can see that I've accidentally done that, so that's why I put <laughs> the block there. But yeah, let's just let's just try that out real quick. Press the button, minecart goes. And it's a little bit slow there, I guess. And then it brings the villager back here. Nice! And in this case, I'm just gonna kill him manually. Um, one thing that I do want here, though, that I notice now is... I probably want to know if there are minecarts in the dispensers or if we need to feed it. So, uh, I'll probably change this up a little bit and put... Need some redstone. Put the power... Uh, of this block on top that way I can go underneath here and I can fit a comparator here and Then have a redstone lamp somewhere indicating whether or not we have minecarts in there because obviously as you guys know a Comparator will turn on if there is stuff in there and this should still work because it sends it through this block Which should power this block there and you know what? Let's just let's just give it a give it a click of the button. Yeah, that works fine cool all right time for a test run i've installed the selector i've installed the god buttons these two here and a little bit tricky to get this to work and we got to try it out because i haven't actually tested it properly um so let's just see if the whole thing works we press this button to get a villager first of all that's step one and we will only be seeing this little area here and i have to design it as well and something went wrong okay the guy oh Crap, that was... <laughs> Let's send him back. Let's pretend that uh, Iskal didn't miss the fact that I haven't powered this rail. <laughs> Here he comes. We press the button and boom. He goes there. Okay, that may be a little bit of a problem right there. <laughs> because we need him to align against this wall, I think. It actually looks stupid otherwise. Um, so if I were to maybe have glass like that, they should be able to travel through glass. That may center them better. Okay, so now from here, if I press the green button, he should be going down this route. And if I press the red button, he should be going and joining that villager over there. So let's try the red one. Yeah, he goes over there. Very nice. And the green one will simply power the rail and not do anything to this thing here. And that's the way I did it. I'm going crazy. I'm getting crazy, by the way, from all these villager noises. I should probably turn my sound off once I build this. But the way I did this was actually pretty simple. The green button doesn't do anything to the rails at all. The green button just powers this rail here. The red button powers this rail as well, but it also powers this torch, which will switch this rail. As you can see, the default setting, setting at the moment is that the minecart goes like this, hops on and goes forward. So the default setting is save the villager. And if I power this torch, boop, that switches and goes into destroy village. Oh, sorry. <coughs> send them to Emerald. <laughs> send them to Emerald City um, uh, setting. And the way I did this is I have the buttons up here. The signal is being brought down. Both both of the buttons are powering this block here, which has a redstone torch connected to it on the side right there. That redstone torch is powering this block, which uh, is the this is the powered rail right here. So when this torch goes on, the powered rail gets power and it sends the, the minecart off. The red then, as, and as you can see, that's all that the green thing does. The red then, uh, with a delayed repeater, will take the signal from the bottom, which is this block here, and send it over this way, powering this torch, which switches this rail. I think we have a baby at least in there, so let's try this again. And we want the villager to be aligned right there. So minecart goes off, gets a baby, and perfect. That actually worked out really well. Villager lands right there. Nice. Friendly creatures. Ah, my brain can breathe again. <laughs> so we've actually got our very first live example of the god machine right here. We got a villager, a librarian, uh, all grown up. And we, of course, want to find out whether or not he's a red or a green villager. He's white, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so the very first book this guy has is a knockback one, which sucks. So I've been trading with him and still no unlocks. Okay, 
Hey, did you give me another book trade? Curse of Vanishing. Okay, not really interested in Curse of Vanishing. You happy now? There we go. Okay, last book is... Impaling 2 for 30. I don't know if that's good. I don't know any of these trident ones. But I'm gonna say this villager with a knockback 1, Curse of Vanishing, and Impaling 2. Uh, of course, they get a name tag as well. But yeah, this, this specific guy right here is gonna go to Emerald Heaven. So, we press this button. Goes down this way. I haven't done anything here. I've tried to do an activated raid, but I can never get these to work. <laughs> but the idea would be that somehow we murder him here. And I could do this the easy way and just send him into a hole of lava and send the minecart with him. That would be the easy way. But I'm f I'm thinking about whether or not I want to recycle the minecart. In my last god machine, I did recycle the minecart, but it also was inconsistent. The villagers didn't always fall into the designated pit and they would start blocking the rails and walking around inside the machine. So maybe I'll just sacrifice the minecart and do it the easy way. Another thing I've done here is that I've hooked up this lamp that I was talking about down here. So this right now says that there are zero minecarts in the system. But if we send a minecart into the system, this should turn on. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. And then if I use that minecart to go and send a villager... It turns off. So that works beautifully. That was a little bit of a tricky thing to wire, but at the end of the day, it's all good. Dudes, I've done it. I've got another god machine created, and I'm loving it. I think this is now working perfectly the way I want it to. We got the light for the minecarts. We got a villager in here, a cartographer. Get out of here, dude. And he is going to Emerald City. Boop. I decided to not recycle the minecarts. I know that's a possibility. It's not super hard to do. But because of my previous experience with inconsistency and stuff, I decided not to do it. And I think, you know what, that block can be a full block. This needs to be a glass block, by the way, because it's aligning the villager. And it um, is a, a non-solid block, so the villagers can travel through without dying. However, I may want to go with another color. Yeah, that's much better. Just a white thing. Alright, so then we order a new villager. Oh, <laughs> these things, these things gets powered. That's cool. We get a little sound indicator that we've clicked the button. I kind of like that. We got a Netwick, definitely a Emerald City one. And yeah, the machine is just working perfectly by the looks of things, which I really, really like. I'm very happy with it. The one issue I had back in Season 4 a couple of years ago was the consistency. Like, villagers would get stuck and... Yeah, not recycling the minecarts are definitely going to help that. And I think this system that I built here is kind of... It's so simple that it can't really go wrong. Whereas uh, in Season 4, I remember using pistons and stuff. And yeah, this is just a lot more uh, user-friendly. I also installed some shulker boxes here so that we have a little bit of storage to trade with the villagers. I didn't want to do anything over the top, so I got two kind of junk boxes with stuff that you get from villager trades, and then I got my emeralds, and anything that we can trade, use to unlock trades, like paper and sugar canes, um, melon, pumpkin, all of that stuff is going to go in there. But all in all, very, very happy with this. I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like this is exactly how I was envisioning this whole thing. So one little problem I'm having is this general area here. It's looking pretty boring and bad. The problem is, can't really do much because I got the water streams <laughs> right behind here from the breeder. So I gotta be a little bit smart, but I do want to try and make that look a little bit cooler. And one thing that may be a little bit stupid to try, but I'm gonna try anyway <laughs> because I'm kind of stupid, would be to create some kind of weird looking, or not necessarily looking, but weird villager character sitting here that fits the lab. So I'm thinking just a nose and two green eyes and then... <laughs> That's kind of stupid, but I think it would be kind of fun. That is pretty creepy. <laughs> pretty creepy. <laughs> but we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. I wanted something that that suits the lab here. Uh, or, you know, the lab looks crazy bad at the moment, but the farms that are behind here... Uh, and, yeah, like, everything here is very futuristic and stuff, and I wanted this to kind of suit that. And I think I did pretty good. I did okay. <laughs> the new emerald texture is great for waking, making wonky weird, weird eyes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the God Machine. Depth Strider 3 and Blast Protection 2. 
I mean, Depth Strider is not a bad book, but not necessarily something I want to save. Is that the best Depth Strider? It is the best Depth Strider. And it was kind of cheap. I guess we save this guy. Yeah, let's save him. <laughs> a god machine once you have one. It's extremely addictive. Okay, so I was thinking about doing another thing here. Uh, I don't have time today to do the villager training hall because that's going to be a mega project as well. But um, I do want to get one of these farmer guys over to the G tower. Because uh, obviously we're going to need food. And I know that it's one of the things that Grian has uh, has uh, been requesting as well. We're going to need some kind of food farm. And I was thinking maybe we do a wheat farm and eat bread. Or maybe we do a care farm and then somehow inject gold into them so that we can eat the best food in the game, which is the golden carrots. So this guy is basically going to be the dude that uh, we eventually turn into our G farmer. <laughs> and I thought it could be funny if we disguise our villagers. So this... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dudes. Uh, Mr. G Farmer <laughs> is the all seeing eye as well. I need some rails. <laughs> okay, I got some rails put down. What an idiot. <laughs> so, Mr. G Farmer, you, sir, I prepared a little bit of a thing here. I wonder if I can push him up in a minecart. Oh, you can. What the heck? That's cool. I did not know that. That's awesome. <laughs> Alright, so this guy is gonna go to the gene tower. I can't look at him. I can't look at him. Why is that so funny? I don't even know. Oh, dude. Disguising the villagers are gonna be very important because we don't want to... We don't want their real identity to be blown due to some prank wars. They are innocent, after all. G Farmer, that's your new home right over there. Isn't that impressive, eh? It is. Okay, we're almost there, G Farmer. Just a little bit longer. All right, so G Farmer is securely in our bunker. Well, hopefully he's secure down here. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't go into the elevator. <laughs> That'll be so bad. Anyway, hopefully he survives and he will be of great help for the G team. Mumbo wants me to come over to his base to give me a chicken head. And I'll never say no to a chicken head. So I guess I guess we'll fly over. It feels a little bit suspicious though, I'm not gonna lie. But <laughs> let's see. His base is looking so impressive. <laughs> I don't really have one. Oh my goodness. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> oh, he gave me something. Oh! Oh! Yes! <laughs> I'm poultry man, and this is my story. <laughs> you look interesting. Gorgeous is what I think you are looking for there. <laughs> new, new year, new you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. With that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, do hit the like button down below. And if you're new, consider subscribing. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, and I will see you dudes in the next episode.